Hi Samina. Hello. How are you? Good, good. Good. First of all, all the students, let's uh, give a warm welcome to Samina, ma'am. Tell her good Thank evening. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good evening, ma'am. Welcome. Hi. Good Hi. evening, ma'am. Hi, everyone. Yeah. Tell so, Samina, we were doing the subject that you normally practice uh, about corporate restructuring, you know, your, uh, so what is your uh, understanding of restructuring and how do companies today uh, restructure themselves in, uh, you know, to improve their profitability? Okay. So firstly, thank you uh, everyone for having me here. Now, I do corporate restructuring on a regular basis. So there are companies that look at restructuring for various purposes. So one could be that the group itself has many entities within. So generally what I, I'll give you certain examples. Like uh, I have a one company which does media and entertainment. So it will have, uh, let's say it is going to... Um, do media sales when i say media sales as in there is a movie which is made but someone has to sell it someone has to market it so the company is handling that but then i understand that along with media sales i can even do digital marketing so with the same set of people or in the same office space i register another company which does digital marketing okay so now I have digital marketing company. I have one which does media sales. Going forward, I set up something which does recruitment. Now I have three companies, which I gives me three layers or three verticals of revenue. But if I go to see in the long run, I realize that these three entities are having a lot of compliances. They have a lot of expenses because they are three separate entities. Then I think because they are having a common space, common uh, uh, group of people handling it, I want to merge it. This is a very standard form of merger that we see that companies which are held by the same group of people, they want to come together and have one entity. This is one very common thing. So we do a merger in that case. All the companies we form under one head. The other similar thing is, that I have one company and my company is doing all types of business like we did for Apollo. Apollo is into tires, manufacturing of tires and it is also into hospitals. So when they came to us, they said that I, uh, the main owner, he came to us and he said that I have two sons. I want to split my business. My business is across the globe. Okay. So there are assets in both the business business vertical so there are hospitals there are manufacturing plants i want to completely have two separate entities so that two sons can handle two entities i don't want one entity so in that case we look at the mergers okay so it depends what is the nature another very common example is a slum sale so what is a slum sale when someone comes to us they say that we have identified one company which is very good. Okay, We already have our existing business. We don't want the merger of them into our company, but we want their business. Now, when you understand business, what is business exactly? It is sales and your purchases. That is business. So your data, creditors is your business. They want to acquire the business, but they don't want to merge because that company might have 10 other things. So they might have 10 other business units. Okay, let's say if it is into food manufacturing, they might be into packet food. They might be into ketchups, syrups, jams. I don't want to buy everything. I want to only acquire their sauces business. So I will look at a slum sale because merger will mean that I am merging the entire company. That means I will have 10 other businesses which I'm not interested in. So I do a slum sale in that case. In that case, I take the entire undertaking and their assets, liabilities, their creditors, datas, everything I will pick up. That is called as a slum sale. Now we go to another, another very common example of restructuring is that I like this company but I don't want their entire undertaking. I just want the factory. Rest everything I have. I have my people. 
I don't want anything else. So I will only acquire identified assets. What is identified assets? Could be machinery only. Could be plant and machinery and land and building. So this is called only. This is called asset. Yes, itemized sale or an asset purchase in the agreement that we make. Sometimes we only acquire employees. We know that this company has expertise. Like if you see Deloitte, if you see KPMG, all of them, it is not the asset that you want to buy. It's not the building. Who cares about the building? Today, KPMG can be anywhere. BDO can be anywhere. These big, big audit firms, they will acquire. It's called an acquihire. Acquihire is, or that is the acquiring the entire team. Their entire transfer pricing team, KPMG has acquired of Deloitte or Deloitte. So they are doing acquisitions. Okay, data privacy. So team has like, um, how is it like getting the entire team? Who's who's the seller? The huh. or they themselves are joining. It would just be a contract where they leave a company and join. So how is it? A... No. So now see, if normally employees resign and come, you yeah. will have a new PF, new graduate. Entire team resigns and comes. How correct. So, so that? correct. So those employees will have a new set of gratuity PF and all, but because it's a new employee. But if I do an acqui hire, I enter into a co contract with KPMG that you hive off your this team and I will acquire it. So in that case, it shows that there is a transfer of employees. So okay. their PF gratuity is still continued. It is not a new resignation because gratuity has a five-year period. Under yeah. what agreement are they transferred? We hire agreement. Okay. Yeah. So that is and sometimes it becomes a get, get in return for send, selling off their entire employee as a team. They get a certain but sometimes what happens the uh, those teams become redundant. I want to focus on certain things. Got so it. I will do that. So okay, that's so a so team which runs an entire sector yeah. segment of business. So Correct. You're selling off the segment, the entire business along with the people Correct. along with it. Another very common example of corporate restructuring is what we do is technology collaborations. Like I'm sitting in India. I know another company has a wonderful product. It is patented. Okay. Like we did for one of the listed companies who is into adhesive space. Adhesive space is adhesive means say of call gum, whatever so they they understood that there is another company in USA and it has this adhesive that they have made for leather industry. So your Jimmy Choo bags or these uh, Cartier, you know, watches and all, which are, they are made of pure leather. But to stick the leather, you need that special product. So we did the technology collaboration so that they send us the technology or they give us access to the technology. So we are not actually going there, acquiring any asset, which you can see. Mm -hmm. What we are purchasing is notes. We are purchasing the, uh, they didn't have a software, but the technology details. Okay. That, way, that was emailed to us. So it was the technology email. sold or technology uh, transfer? No, it was, it was sold to us. Okay. We took, we took uh, agreements from them that they will not get into the business and this technology will be ours and they cannot sell it to anyone okay, else. So the business is sold whose yeah. main core uh, We didn't take the land the building they had a factory, we did not take all of that all we took is the technology so we did a technology collaboration Business can be sold because it's your asset Correct. And what is the agreement called? Technology transfer agreements Technology transfer agreement and it was of a huge amount You got it around 10 million dollars okay so in case of a uh, cross border because when uh, 10 million dollars is 80 crores for only difficult. two documents that we got basically we got only two documents for 80 crores 80 crores two documents that was tech but it was what was written was technology okay. basically what is there in those ingredients and how to produce it here so when uh, just when 80 crores is being transferred how much do the lawyers and cs get <laughs> <laughs> different altogether. We also touch wood, we also made a lot of money in that because we are the ones who are literally ha having these transactions, uh, licensing with them and, you know, getting these transactions done. Definitely. Any percentage of 80 crores is acceptable. <laughs>
right so now again now when when i was seeing that the cross border transactions when they happen they get so complex and the uh, national con- uh, the laws are so different so how are they dealt with so i'll tell you and any example of that practice yeah, so yeah. recently we did a cross border transaction uh, and when i say cross border restructuring for a listed indian company so a listed indian company had subsidiaries across the globe so we we were dealing with singapore netherlands united kingdom and uh, and singapore netherlands and uh, uk uk yeah and uh, dubai so we were dealing with four jurisdictions so these uh, business had a multiple uh, uh, subsidiaries they had subsidiaries step down subsidiaries, subsidiaries associate companies here and we wanted to get instead of having multiple subsidiaries like step down subsidiaries we wanted direct subsidiaries so instead of a which is a listed company a has a subsidiary b b has a subsidiary c c has a subsidiary d Correct. d has a subsidiary e so instead of that we wanted to cut the layers and have only direct subsidiaries of a so b will become direct got subsidiary it, c it. will so become all direct of them subsidiary would be, uh, you know merged in a correct correct so what Not do they merge we didn't do a merger we i, I understood i understood the yeah. structure the so what is correct. the benefit in doing this like what so was the under action? your companies act if you see that there is a section which says that you cannot have companies cannot invest beyond two layers of subsidiaries correct correct okay so now i do not want multiple layers because if i want to invest in a jurisdiction where my subsidiary e is there i cannot do it because they are okay. multiple layers of subsidiary okay so this is what we did and this then you have to then how does the reading go about with respect to laws of all the country so you have to catch company law netherlands company law ha huh. so you know what is interesting UK. and which was very which is you know one should know that all of these laws are more or less same what we do buy back in india singapore also buy back is almost the same like how for capital reduction you have to go to nclt same thing you have to do even there is a singapore authority where you have to go it's okay. called the arc okay similarly in uh, uk we have the nsi okay so these are how we have the sebi over here they have similar nsi so you have to take approvals simil it is not very different hmm. okay so it is so when we and you have to deal with local lawyers over there though you will be the lawyers who will tell them that listen we want to do a capital reduction or whatever is called in your jurisdiction hmm. so they will say either you do capital reduction or do a buyback so it is more or less same in all jurisdictions that i have dealt with so far and all common law countries it is the same correct so the commonwealth countries mostly have the same uh, same law and barely any difference except for dubai dubai does not have all of this mm-hmm. so dubai in fact the process is so easy because they don't have complicated buy back this that law you they have just one authority you tell them you want a capital share reduction they will say take approval of everyone and come back there is no concept of buy back this that etc so how does it work in dubai either it is increase of share capital or decrease of share capital simple So then, how do you uh, like, for example, if there is a company in Dubai and they want to do this, so how do you execute it? Like, so what's the process? Like, you which authority is there in Dubai? Ah, uh, it is called the FZE authority. I will have to check the exact name. But those are specific authorities. One thing about ah uh, these authorities is that it is in Dubai and all. It is an Arabic language, so you need to la- you need to have a Arabic speaking lawyer over there who can speak to the authority and get clarity. How big the legal teams are who do this because ah uh, consider yeah like- they are pretty big. Anyone who does mergers acquisitions, they are teams who do it. It is very rare that you see one single lawyer doing the M and A for a big company. Hundred percent and all from different countries representing different interests. Correct, correct. Yes. Yes. You need to take a call. Ah. Uh, No, that's fine. Huh. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Now, uh, the next thing we were understanding is companies like we've seen some listed companies like Tata's. They had a uh, recent, uh, you know, capital reductions. So, uh, and buyback. So, what is the rationale? This is ongoing something that is happening. So, other companies. So, what you- is the difference? Because ultimately, both have the same effect, uh, of share a reduction of share capital in a way, right? right so i'll tell you most every company has their own different understanding most of this is uh 
you know directed by the finance team if the company has sufficient profits hmm. they do not want the profits to be lying there rather they give it back in the form of buyback they do a buyback take back the shares of the company so you should have sufficient profits most yeah. profit making companies don't mind doing that they do a buyback so in buyback there is an outflow of funds and they don't want so many shareholders in the market so they want like there in case of tata tata sons would be controlling so if they give an option that to public shareholders you can do a buyback tender your shares for buyback okay and how is the tax implication it's equal for both when they do or see it all depends on Which the profit of the action. company like capital reduction you can go to nclt take a capital uh, file your petition and irrespective whether you have profits or no you can do a capital reduction correct okay and there is no tax implication in case of capital reduction in case of buyback there is a buyback tax just to be paid correct the dif- the differential the capital gains yeah tax. because you are paying buyback as i said to pay out of profits so if it's profits into giving dividend you are not you are circumventing the dividend and giving a buy and doing a buyback okay so they are saying okay in so you earlier you would uh, have to pay tax on the dividend though it is dvt is not there anymore but the profits would anyway be taxed in the hands of the shareholder now it is buyback okay great so so late in the night you are working from home you are done with no, your i'm in office you are in office <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So I just have some work, then I leave. Okay. Thank you so much, Amina. Ma'am. If anyone has a question, uh, they want to ask, ma'am. We'll take a one or two questions before we uh let ma'am off for today. Anyone wants to ask any questions, etc. They can just unmute themselves and ask. Ma'am, I have a question. Ma'am, hi, ma'am. Hi. Tell me. Just a bit louder, uh, and just first tell your name, from which state are you, and then ask your question. Ah, uh, ma'am, myself, Saran, ma'am. Hi, tell me, Sarah. Ma'am, you told that you have merged the company which has more subsidiaries in Dubai, Netherlands, Singapore, and you quoted the provision of one eighty six in that. Ma'am, but in that provision, we have another another specific point that if that jurisdiction allows that uh, uh, more layers, we can proceed with that, no, ma'am? Correct, correct. Now see, it is in India. What in we have our company is in India. and it has subsidiaries across so if i want to invest in my third layer of subsidiary which is in uk and all then how will i be able to invest because it will be a 186 impediment because even though those jurisdictions allow here it is saying that you cannot make investments beyond two layers correct so if we acquire so what he he saying that in section 186 there is a provision that we acquire a company which already has investment subsidiary then it is an exception where it is allowed yeah. but if you want to make a fresh subsidiary that would not be allowed no but fresh investment i want to acquire certain assets and to acquire a new company mm-hmm. which but it already has three, it i already have three layers of subsidiary so let's say my third layer is mm-hmm. in UK. Hmm. Now in UK, I find a nice company which I want to purchase. I won't be able to do that. Okay. So okay. normally, uh, when we see these cross-border merger, how, what is the maximum amount of complicated transaction that you've seen with cross-border? Is, how many countries have all, been there? See, I have. There was one transaction we didn't go through. It would have been the biggest transaction in the world in the history of in the insurance sector. Okay. So. But what I'll tell you why. Kind of a transaction was it? Like it was. Like why was it? Why would it be? Ha, no, two of the biggest players. Okay, one big player purchasing the second big player across the globe. Okay. And like Visa and Mastercard, like you all must have heard of Visa Mastercard. So how they are the biggest players, or if you have heard of Netflix, Amazon, biggest OTT players today. Correct. If Netflix purchases Amazon, which is across the globe. It would be one of the biggest. mergers or biggest acquisition but that transaction did not go through because like how you have cci that Got competition it. commission of india similar authority in usa did not give the permission okay. saying that it will be an because it was a anti we call it anti trust anti trust authority did not give the permission for that so we had done all the paperwork we did the diligence but because the anti trust authority did not give the acquisition permission of usa then it did not make sense to do across the globe 
Correct, correct. And I remember once you were doing a transaction which you were telling me that one company uh, he ha has a subsidiary abroad and that wants to buy another company of another country. So which country laws will be, uh, yeah. approvals will be taken. So what is that? And can you okay. just give light on that kind of, those kind of transaction? One company from one country has a subsidiary in a second country, wants to acquire a company in a third country, right? Yeah. Those kind of transactions happen. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we do a lot of these, but there we got stuck and there was a very, which went on for many days, the debate. It was simple that if there are two, like, let's say I am based out of India, your company is based out of UK. Okay. And are we are acquiring my subsidiary of Singapore is acquiring your subsidiary in Netherlands. Hmm. Now, which will be the dispute resolution clause? Which law we have to write which now? Laws will this, be agreement, this agreement will be governed by the laws of Dash. Normally, if it is India, we write laws of India. Correct. So then they said this country, that country. Then we chose a country which was uh, mutual, mutual, and which was non uh, non biased countries, which was so basically the company neutral country. Which law will be applicable? Neutral, it was a neutral country. So none of the parties were had any of their offices over there. So we called it a neutral country to have a, as that Which will be the government. Also, uh, a third country laws will be applicable on the Yeah, time. correct. And that is allowed. Oh, and so basically are... company from India and merging with a company in USA and applying the laws of UK. UK, correct. What is that kind of things called? Like, oh, this is uh, common. Yeah, this is international law where we say that international law will apply that way. Okay. Thank you so much, Samina. We'll see you again for okay, uh, thank very you. soon. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Bye. Thank Everyone, you, thanks, Samina, ma'am. Thank, thank, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, thank, ma ma thank you, ma'am. Yeah, stop the recording.